How do you use the Nest Egg financial planning software? That's what we're going to go over today. I'm going to show you step by step in a bunch of different episodes on how to get set up to use the software to maximize your financial planning situation. The Nest Egg software is fantastic, my friends. And once you learn how to use it, man, it is going to be is revolutionary. There's lots of great stuff in there for sure. So welcome to Heritage Wealth Planning, a place where you come to learn how to use the financial planning software to get your own financial planning situation uh, squared away as best as possible. So as always, don't forget to subscribe. Go down, I think it's on that side, subscribe down below. Hit the notification bell to be notified for future content. So let's go ahead and get started here. I think it's going to be interesting. So the first thing you're going to find out is you're going to get the intro. And you see I got from Dustin here today. Um, and, uh, welcome to Nest Egg by Jazz. And below is your link to Nest Egg, blah, blah, blah. So you click on that email, and then we'll just go over here. And it's going to take us to the Nest Egg software and this is what we got to start so basically what happened the first actually I should back up it's going to take you to the place where you got to create a password it's really that simple as so you put a password in whatever password and then you're good to go so it's going to take you right here and then what you're going to find is you're going to see okay it's going to say josh and is there another person so let's just go ahead in here and make sure it's got me squared away and we're going to put my date of birth there we go i'm going to say i'm in georgia because that's where i am all right, uh, we're going to say Planning Horizon. I'm playing until I'm 90 years old. That's good. So that's you can do whatever you want. And let's just hit save. All right, so now I'm married. And we're going to say my wife's name is Charlotte. All right, and well, it has my age in there. So she's not, she's four years younger than me. So we're going to say 1974. And we're going to say her planning age is uh, till uh, 90 as well. So remember, what's going on here is that we're, you just, we're both using the planning age until 90, horizon until 90. But again, she's four years younger. So hers is going to be 46 years. And mine's going to be, what's that, 42, right? Yeah, 42 years. So there you go. Now, if you want to add participants, just click on this button, child, grandchild, other. I'm not going to do that here today, but you certainly can. You can just go add participants and you'll be set up. All I want to do right now is get the basis uh, going here for sure. All right. So now we're going to income. And as you can see, you see a couple of things here. Social Security estimated and my salary and Charlotte's salary. So let's just say uh, for the time, you can do whatever you want. You can mess with this. Is what makes it awesome. You can mess around. With it. I'm going to say uh, I ink, I make, let's see, 50000 a year. All right. So we're going to say 50000 a year. And I'm the owner of the salary. It's already started. It increases by 3% a year. And it's going to end from my Social Security, uh, end at my retirement. Now, I am not excluding that from Social Security tax. You only want to do that if you're like in the Texas retirement system uh, or some other like the teacher says, not very many anymore, but there's like eight or nine or something like that where the states, uh, you're part of the state or the county where the note can contribute to the Social Security system. If that's one of you, you definitely want to do that because we don't want your Social Security to be skewed because what's going to happen is your Social Security will be a lot more according to this software than what it really is. So we don't want to do that. So then hit save and I'm good. Now, Charlotte will say she makes 70000 a year, whatever. We can say whatever we want again, 70000 a year. And we're going to say already started. And again, we're not going to exclude from Social Security because we want the Social Security numbers to be correct. If you are excluded from Social Security, I cannot state this enough. Make sure you put that in there so the Social Security numbers don't get skewed. But I don't want her. To, I want her to be at my retirement, not hers, because we want to retire at the same time. And so we're going to hit save. OK, so that's what we're going to show you there. Now, here's the, so we want to also talk about Social Security. I'm not going to start Social Security at 65. I want to start at 67, all right, which is my full retirement age. And we're going to go ahead and use based on full retirement benefit. And what we're going to do here is on full retirement benefit. Now, this would be something that you have to kind of figure out on your own, but, and you can always go to ssa.gov to figure it out, but I'm just going to look at my little trusty calculator here show you that my average index monthly earnings ban i'm going to put i make fifty thousand a year now again i highly uh, highly suggest you go to social security ssa.gov and sign in to look at your benefits so that we can get a gauge of what it's going to be and what we'll see if i make fifty thousand a year my uh, primary insurance amount is 1852 1852 and you can use that in the back of your mind too so i'm going to go back here 
I'm going to put 1852 as my PIA, my primary insurance amount, which kicks in at my full retirement age. All right, so we're going to use that, and we're definitely not receiving this already. Just There's a couple of things that aren't really as conspicuous as you like, but just make sure you look at the boxes here. And so we're going to say 1852 at my primary insurance amount. That my uh, full retirement age is my primary insurance amount. So we're going to do the same thing for Charlotte here as well. Now, here's the interesting. So Charlotte, because we're going to retire the same age, she's going to take hers. If I'm taking mine at 67 at my full retirement age, when she's going to take hers, if she takes it at the same year, it'd be 63, which would mean it'd be reduced. But we don't want that. We don't want her to have it reduced. We're going to take it at 67 for her as well so she gets her full uh, benefit, okay? And then we're going to come down here and we're going to say, based on full benefit, retirement benefit, and we're going to go back to my trusty calculator. We're going to type in 70,000. And her benefit will be 2385, 2385 at her full retirement age, 67. 23. Eight, five. We're going to type that in. So just let me, side note here, if she were to take it earlier, 66, she would reduce her benefit by about 7.5%, and eh, about 7%. So let's say uh, 2385, and the same thing for me too. If she were to reduce it, uh, if she took it at 66, it would be reduced by 7%, minus 7%. So you put 2218 in there. If she were to take it at 65, you're reduced by 14%, 2385. Minus 14%. So you put two, uh, oops, two, three, eight, five, minus 14%. You put 2051 in there. So uh, the issue is this is where you really want to go to ssa.gov, sign in, get your statement. That way you can see what they're estimating for your Social Security benefit. Because you can do like, look, you can put based on historical covered earnings. That's the best. I mean, literally, if you have that, you can go here. And I'll tell you exactly. So you just go in here and you say what your earnings are. So and you made you know, 10,000 bucks. So if you can do that, that's the most accurate of your, because remember, Social Security works like this. The top 35 years of earnings, the top 35 years of earnings is of the covered earnings. Again, not being a teacher or a, uh, it used to be the yeah, FERS. The CC, CSRS, Civil Service Retirement System, is covered, but FERS was not. So the top, and that was a long time ago, but the top 35 years of earnings is what they base your Social Security bit numbers on. And so if you have those numbers, man, you should go in there and put those in number by number. I know it looks like a kind of a pain, but it's all there right on SocialSecurity.gov. So if you can get that, I tell you, that, that'd be wonderful for your ability to, to guesstimate your retirement plan for sure. All right, so let's do that. So now what we see here is when I uh, retire and she retires at 67, I mean, when I retire at 67, she's not going to retire. She's not going to take her Social Security at that point. I'm going to have mine, but she won't. So we're going to have four years. We're just getting mine and not hers. All right. Now you can always add other income if you want, and you'll see pension. And we're, we're not going to do that right now, but you could if you want to do that, or if you feel that you're going to be self-employed while you're working and retire, you can do whatever you want. It's just This is just the income if you want to add in, in there is fine. Generally speaking, what you want to do is put the pension in there. I'm not going to do that. Just to keep it simple. All right. So savings. Now we got employer retirement plan. So let's just say uh, we'll put, uh, we'll say contribution. I contribute 5% of my uh, ass, my uh, salary into there and primary match. They match 5%. Uh, percent. So we're going to say owners me again, the saving starts already started. My target is percent of, um, my salary, 5% of my salary, savings ends at my retirement and primary match to, uh, let's see here. We want to do that. We're, yeah. Okay. There we go. So we're going to say they match a hundred percent up to the first 3%. All right. So that's what we're saying here. So we're saying the, you know, this is where you can do 50% of the next dollars. We're, we're not doing that. I mean, you could. So when it comes to your 401k, some firms will match you hundred percent of the, uh, the first three and 50% of the next three or something like that. I'm just going to say they match me 100% up to 3%. That's it, okay? You can do whatever you want, but just remember that. Or a flat match of 5%. I'm just saying they match 100% up to 3% here. And again, this is just for uh, to show you how to do this. Your contribution, my, I put 5,000 a year in, 5% uh, a year in, they're putting 3% up a year of my, to match. My first 3%, they're matching that. Uh, my first, 5%, they're matching 3% of that. I know that's confusing. Hope that makes sense. 
Um, and then again, if you want to put self-employed, check that. I'm not going to do that. But if you do check that, that gives you a whole different amount of money you can put in. And I'm not going to do that here. All right. So that's my employer plan. We're going to do Charlotte's employer plan. Oops. And right here, we'll click on that. We're going to do the same thing here. But we're going to say she puts 10% in. All right. And we're going to see they match her 8%. All right, so maybe she has a better gig than I do or something like that. But we're just say she has 10% going in and then match her 8%. So ideally, she'll have a higher account uh, when uh, when she has when she retires. I mean, yes, she makes more money, gets a better match, and has more going in. All right, so right now, that's all I'm doing for retirement savings plans. I'm not putting anything. I'm not putting a taxable account. I'm not saving any money. I'm just saying at the end of the day, these are my two sources of retirement income. Uh, savings, that's it. My retirement plan and my wife's retirement plan. All right, so net worth is where it starts getting kind of fun. All right, so we click on net worth, and we're going to start by saying we have, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say we have a house. All right, so let's go up here. We're going to say we own a home. Do you see what I did there? So you get, when you click on net worth, it'll give you this drop down, or not even drop down, a column of all these different things you can put in. And the first thing I did, I clicked on property, and so then I'm going to click on I own. All right, we're going to say I purchased this, uh, let's see, calendar year. So let me go back. We're going to say 2013, yep. And we'll say the current value, the purchase price is $400,000. we will say the current value is, I don't know, 500000 And we're going to say appreciates at 2% a year, and the property tax will just say 5000 Oops. And then we're going to say the annual insurance amount is 1500 all right, so that covers my house. It says I have a, a home. I own it. The own, oh, that's what I got. Make sure you do this joint. I almost forgot that. So the receiver says owner. It's going to default to just me. You want to make sure if it's, if it's a joint loan, you want to make sure you put joint, drop down for joint. Purchase price. Why is that important? Because it shows you have a $100,000 uh, capital gain in there. That's not taxable under the current tax law, but let's say it's purchase price at 10000 now it's worth 500000 It still won't be taxable today, but in a few short years, it certainly could be. Appreciates at 2% a year. My property taxes are 5000 and my annual insurance amount is 1500 So we're going to hit save. And if you want, you can go down and do all kinds of things. So you can do property. Um, you can add a, you can do vacation homes. You can, I mean, you can do whatever you want. All right, so I also want to do investments. And so I'm going to click on this guy, and then I'm going to do add account. And we're going to do investment account. And this is going to be my 401. I want to include in my plan and manage. I don't think it matters so much. But we're going to now. This is where it can get confusing. It says how much cash you have. I'm going to say I don't keep any cash, but I need to add a holding. All right. So I'm just going to say for right now, I just got VTS. S, oops, VTSMX. I'm going to say I have Vanguard Total Stock Index. Uh, and this is where you got to do the share price. So let's say I have 250 uh, let's say $200,000 of Vanguard Total Stock Index, divide that by 71.21. That means I have 2,800, we'll just say 2,808 in shares. Okay, so blank, we're going to hit that. And that's it. I mean, that's literally all you do. I don't have any cash. I keep it all in the VTS, VTSMX. I'm the owner. And again, you got to make, let's see, look at that. It changed. You got to click on that and, and see, look at that. So you got to click on that to make sure it shows up as account type as a 401k. It, I'm telling you, screw everything up if it keeps it where it shows you as a we want taxable account. We wanted a 401k. And we're going to say maybe she keeps $20,000 of cash. And maybe she's a little, and then again, you got to change owner to Charlotte. And we're going to add a holding. Maybe she's a little bit more, uh, conservative than I. So we're going to say she does VFII, oops, VFIIX. We're going to say she uses the Vanguard GMA. And we'll say, you know, she's got 150000 bucks in there. All right. So we're going to say she has uh, 150000 divided by 10.19. She has 14,720 shares. 14,700, oops, 720 shares. Boink. All right. So we're going to hit save. And for now, that's all we're going to do. That's just the two accounts that we have. Um, we're going to say we do. We, you can put your bank account there if you want. That's fine. Um, we want to say property insurance if you have life insurance. So we'll just say for simplicity, we only have term, but you can change this around. Uh, that's group life. That's not what we want. We want to say 
account insurance term life here, which will show you in case Josh dies early. We'll say it's a $500,000 death benefit. Oops, and I'm paying annual premium, say 300 bucks a year. I'm the insured, I'm the owner, and the one thing I don't like is it doesn't say who the beneficiary is, but you always gotta change the policy, so we'll say 2030. Um, that's, I don't understand why I don't owe uh, premium ends in 2030. So you just gotta kinda mess with this. It's weird that it doesn't give you a chance to put the, who the beneficiary is. It just says how much, <laughs> what's the percentage of the beneficiary? Like, okay, um, so that's odd. But anyway, so we put $500,000 of term life in there, and just to cover me, and we're going to say Charlotte also has a $500,000 term life policy as well. And because she's a woman, it costs less and she's younger. It only costs two fifty, dollars where mine costs five hundred. dollars Now we got to change the owner. Okay, so a couple of things here. Remember, life insurance, you want to avoid the unholy trinity. You don't want the insured, the owner, and the beneficiary to be two complete or three people, three different people. So in this case, we have the insured is Charlotte, the owner is Charlotte, and I'm the 100% beneficiary. And again, we're going to say 2030. But just in the back of your mind, anytime you mess with life insurance, you can't have what well, you can, but you don't want the insured, the owner, and the benefit, the unholy trinity, and what happened, and tax subject to gift tax. To the, to the beneficiary when you die, all right? So when the insured dies and the owner is different than the insured and it's different than the beneficiary, that money will be subject to a gift tax. Now it's not much of a gift tax today because I think it's like five and a half million dollars gift tax exemptions. And so you really most likely won't be subject to anything, but just in the back of your mind, you wanna avoid the unholy trinity is bad. So we hit save. All right. And so that's so far so good. So we have the insurance on there. We got the investments. We don't have any stock plan. Now we want to do a loan though. We, that's 